one thing you noted or you touched on is, you know, and it's really become apparent here in 2020 with the whole COVID thing is, um, you know, growing these networks, growing these bases. A lot of this work is being done virtually. Um, what's your experience relative to the virtual side of, you know, building propellant and your fund and networking? So I'm a big face-to-face -face person my entire career. It's been face-to-face -face like a lot of people, but I do a lot of events. Every month I'm doing an event for entrepreneurs, for investors, for the entire ecosystem. So that came to a halt like a lot of people did last year in uh, February. That was our my last in-person event for entrepreneurs. And in March was my last in-person event for investors and so, you know, I wanted to still stay in touch with people, you know, and really bring people together. So in April is when to start to do things virtually. So with the investor events for Propellant Ventures, we used to go to lunches, dinners, mixers, you know, bring high quality people together, like-minded people. We decided to go to Zoom like a lot of people, but we have interesting discussions on topics that are relatable and interesting for investors. Uh, where we have investors on our panel or entrepreneurs and then just have, you know, breakout rooms and engagement with our attendees. And then we also do virtual happy hours where we have a guest speaker who is also interesting, could be a successful entrepreneur, could be just an interesting individual, such as a professional athlete, for example. And it just starts a dialogue. And again, we get to meet people. So the goal is to bring good quality people together, mostly investors and some entrepreneurs. So that's something we've been doing. We did 20 of those last year just for Propellant Ventures, and we're continuing to do these uh, this year. And then something I also do is I run a, an event called Founder Night Out, and I do that with the Founder Institute, the program that I manage here in Chicago, but also it's for the entire community. So normally we pick a different location, a restaurant, a bar, a co-working space, corporate office, to have a happy hour environment to bring 50 to 100 people together in a casual environment. Well, we did our last one in February last year. And as I mentioned, that was halted. Mm -hmm. So one of our graduates of the Founder Institute created a 3D virtual platform, event platform. And in April, we went virtual. And I'm always interested in trying new things and, you know, continuing to get the community together. So we did something. We've done eight of these now since April of last year and very different than what anyone has probably ever experienced Mm -hmm. You control your own experience, your, your own avatar. You walk around and get to meet people one-on-one -on -one in small group discussions. We have table topic discussion areas for group discussion. We have a startup showcase where we select founders to pitch their businesses. We have sponsor booths. We have a virtual bar, a virtual cafe. Uh, pretty amazing. You can yeah. talk to people one-on-one -on -one or in small groups, either through voice, video, text, chat, and even share your screen. So it just gets better every time. And the team um, at Gamer Jive who created it uh, is continuing to evolve the uh, platform. So I'm really excited about uh, you know, what we're doing. And we have six of these planned for this year. So we're going to still continue doing these every month. That's awesome. I, you know, I look at how this technology has evolved, right? So when COVID hit, I mean, some people, you know, prior to COVID, they use some of these tools. They maybe use Skype or things like that. But once COVID hit, you know, Zoom really uh, grew their platform, you know, grew the technology, the technology matured. Uh, Ring Central is another form. It's built on the same Zoom platform. There's GoToMeeting, there's Microsoft Teams, all these different technologies have evolved to meet the need. And I think the most interesting is, you know, the one you're talking about where you kind of, you know, blended the virtual reality portion in. So for people who aren't familiar with that, is there something that they need uh, special in order to attend those, any certain technology or any kind of equipment? So that's the beauty of what Gamer Drive has created. It's a browser-based environment. You don't have to download a plugin. You do not have to plug in a VR or virtual reality headset. It's uh, as long as you have a fairly new computer and you know, you're pretty good to go. Um, and yeah, it's, that, that was something that they were very aware of when they created this because other competitors or other solutions out there that are 3D require some of those things. Now, not everyone, but most of them do. And uh, they definitely paid attention to that to try to make it as easy as possible. Now, there's always a learning curve with any new technology, but 
once you you get into the environment, play around with it for a few minutes, you're, it's pretty pretty intuitive to move around. If you want to recommend somebody to appear on the podcast as a guest, please email us at info at opsqc.com. If you're interested in sponsoring a podcast, please reach out to us at the same email. We'd love to have your support.